The movie begins the end of the 19th century and the King of Belgium has sent this man here Leon Rom to the African Congo he needs him to bring back some of the excellent diamonds of Opar to assist him pay his enormous debt when Liam gets to Opar the expedition meets a tribe that doesn't appear to be okay with their plans hiding behind a shield Leon misses all the action now all his buddies are gone and he's right at the spotlight face to face with this huge warrior that's when we see Leon has a few moves of his own that Rosary he carries around has nothing to do with prayers this unexpected talent earns him a chat with chief amonga who's not a fan of small talk showing a few of the oprin diamonds he asks what leon is prepared to do for these babies mabanga has something very specific in mind there's a man he wants to see leon says all he needs is a name speaking of names look what happened to tarzan he is now called john clayton three earl of greystoke and a member of the house of lords o and he's also wearing clothes this is a meeting to convince him to accept King Leopold's invitation to visit the Congo and endorse all the wonders of Belgian rule but he's a different person now evidently he doesn't like to be called Tarzan and he says the Congo is too hot after he leaves Dr. George Williams goes after him for a word he's a diplomatic and boy for the US also sent to endorse King Leopold but he has a secret agenda King Leopold is suspected to have enslaved people in the African Congo and George wants to go there to investigate these accusations and if he does find any Thing fishy going on a famous face would be great as an extra witness John grumpily agrees and they arrange to meet later on his way home John thinks about his poor parents lost in the jungle so many years ago neither of them survived but when the gorillas saw baby John that little thing was just too cute to be harmed maybe they could teach him a few tricks who knows arriving at Greystoke Manor he sees his wife with a bunch of kids Jane is teaching them about the jungle but the lesson is over the moment they set eyes on Tarzan they want to see his hands and ask all kinds of rude questions Jane is also excited to go back to Africa after eight years but John says he's not taking her after the recent miscarriage they can't be too careful not to mention that Mabenga is still somewhere near the destination very mad at him she says she wants to go home John says this is home at night he goes through his stuff in the attic his dad's diary is full of hope of being rescued or at least that someone will save the baby if he doesn't survive to take him back to England which is their true home old habits die hard though in the morning Jane is sitting where she feels comfortable John joins her to say he's giving in but he makes her promise to be safe at all times off they go then along with Dr. Williams when John starts to cuddle with lions Jane explains that he has known them since they were cubs William does not look less terrified with that information in Bulma Leon finds out that his welcome committee has been snubbed the happy trio is already three days ahead of him he explains the delay to Mr. Frum who doesn't take Take it very well Mr. Frum is here as a representative of his firm to make sure King Leopold will pay his debt Leon tells him to stop whining and tosses a shiny toy to make him shut up by now the visitors have reached Jane's home her father used to teach English in the village and she grew up there. The Cuba tribe welcomes them happily and she meets her childhood friend Wasim Buk at night they sit by the bonfire and John asks about the centuries around the village chief Muguro tells him things aren't the same as before rumors about slavery slave traders are coming from the south George is relieved to discover the foamy drink is just beer and then everyone starts to sing Jane says that song is the legend of Tarzan for a long time Tarzan was believed to be a ghost in the trees someone who could fight animals as one of them he had an ape mother Kala and his ape brother was a cud because he was hunted as a rye of passage for many tribes he learned to see other men as enemies until he met chief Mubiro the first one to treat him kindly soon followed by Jane herself of course their first and counter was rather odd as she tried to respect the cultural differences but had to draw some kind of line with all the sniffing back to the present day the village is invaded by Leon Rom's men in the middle of the night chief Muviro is told to needle which a Cuba chief never does it's all a trap for John of course but Leon takes down the chief anyway once John is tied up Major Kirkover says he's not much of a legend and Manga will be disappointed these guys have forgotten they're not the only with firearms George has a couple and many of the Cubas know their way around guns just fine Kirkover ends up losing John as they fight back and Leon is rushed to the safety of his ship Jane refuses to scream but Leon says Tarzan will come for her sooner or later anyway while they set sail George finds his friend face down in the mud and cuts him loose in the morning John is ashamed of the destruction caused by people that were actually after him Kubas tell him about some white men that have been around they don't wear Belgian colors and are called force public John and his friends plan a path that will 
will get them to Bonga's Mountain before Leon's ship now George has some questions how does he know where Leon is going John is not in the mood for giving answers and kindly reminds George this is entirely his fault aboard Leon's ship Jane tries diplomatic intimidation he tells Leon that they are in the Congo by royal invitation Leon clarifies he was the one who orchestrated the whole thing so he could nicely deliver her husband to his murderous enemy the plan never included Jane and George but now that their witnesses a tough decision must be made giving up on both the intimidation and the diplomacy. Jane wraps it up by mocking his mustache meanwhile George is having a hard time keeping up with the new gang then he asks how exactly they're planning to catch a train on the move to his complete horror John simply answers gravity after a moment of understandable hesitation George takes that leap of faith but when it comes to vine swinging that's just too much for him to pull off on his own finally landing atop the wagon George forgets about all that when his worst fears are confirmed the train is transporting dozens of young Africans in chains that horrible sight only fuels John's rage and it's even easy easier to knock out that bunch of little toy soldiers an engineer is brought to them and he pretends not to speak English but a demonstration of George's shooting skills makes the men fluent in a split second he swears he's only building a bridge for Leon's army and has no part in that himself John and George want to know more about this army it seems like someone has been a busy little king lately came Leopold had a fort built in a strategic place among the rivers and now the railroads the army is still to come but they won't budge until they get paid the engineer says they're expecting 20,000 mercenaries Leon Rom is in charge of the plan and he's expected to be named governor general soon while they talk Jane is getting unchained by Kirkover walking past Wasimbu he speaks to her in his native language so the other won't understand Kirkover tells them to cut it out and threatens to drown the boy if she does anything unlittle like during the delightful dinner with Leon Rom Jane asks about the rosary Madagascar spider silk he says a gift from a priest when he was only nine and when she tries to snatch it from him she gets to see what it can do as a good villain Leon can't resist the PowerPoint presentation explaining his evil plan in detail he also includes the motivation he wants to be remembered as the lowborn who rose to power by saving his king from bankruptcy he's pleased to see her reaction to the name of manga he's also curious about that grudge Jane tells him Tarzan was responsible for the death of his only son on the next day John and George are planning the next steps George has all the evidence he needs now one of the documents actually says it's against the law to pay natives for work he worries what King Leopold will be able to do with a huge army considering he already owns a land full of diamonds and has successfully enslaved the people now they're debating whether they should take a detour to avoid the Mangani the Kubas explain to George that the difference between gorillas and Mangani is that gorillas are nice but he won't let John go by himself the Kubas take the ledgers for safekeeping until they meet again in Bulma John and George set off on foot cheered by their friends and all the people they've just helped set free just when George is getting around asking his friend if it's true that he can talk to animals he gets a chance to see it happen a bunch of ostriches passed by them and one of them is apparently telling George to stay clear it could always be just John messing with him of course they soon reach the Mangani and John explains how this will work his former brother Ed Cut will come down to fight him because he is considered a deserter George is not to interfere under any circumstances when the fight starts we kind of wonder how could the poor man even try to but anyway John advises him to kneel when a cut comes closer and it miraculously works luckily that isn't that sole survivor type of duel and they both get to live but now John has a nasty bite on his back so George has to stitch him up with ants to make it all the more disgusting John eats a few sticking insects into someone's skin as the kind of thing that makes you feel comfortable to share about your past so George tells him he was once a mercenary himself right after the civil war he did a lot of stuff he's not proud of and deep down he fears he might be no different than those Belgians not a man of many words John responds to that that with elephant therapy and there's even a baby elephant that one seems to work morning comes and Jane is still chained to the vessel Kirkover gets mad when she starts speaking the native language and drops was in view's cage into the water she takes the opportunity to escape and jump off the boat Kirkover panics to see their bait go and starts shouting orders Leon is startled by that racket and comes out just in time to see them pull up an empty cage Jane and Wasimbu make it to the shore despite the angry hippos coming for them Leon tells his 
his men to stop shooting he can't risk losing his trophy into the jungle Wasimbu goes to get help while Jane finds herself in the middle of the Mangani she she immediately bows down when the force publicized that just arrived she is forced to accept their help Leon tells his men to hold their fire and carefully tip this to her he promises they won't hurt the apes but as they slowly walk backwards one of the trigger happy boys messes up big time Tarzan can hear Jane screaming from afar and immediately swings all the way there he arrives in time to save his brother from a Belgian bullet but the damage is done now for both sides and the battle is far from over Leon has managed to escape with his inner circle still taking Jane as his prisoner they all stop in their tracks when they hear the distinctive Tarzan sound trying to keep it cool Leon says it sounds better than he expected and what about George the poor man is trying to track John in the middle of the flooded battleground now it's time for us to learn more about the Tarzan manga feud the chief's son was part of the tribe's youth whose rite of passage included hunting the legendary jungle man unfortunately for everyone his arrow hit the wrong target his victim was Kola Tarzan's eighth mother and Tarzan acted to Avenger Chief Ambanga as that type of ruler who doesn't want to know who started especially when he did so by the time John gets to the mountain the whole tribe is there to greet him while the diamonds are pouring in and Jane keeps getting yanked around and George is almost there to keep going buddy John tries to talk some sense into Manga Leon as gathering an army and will soon be able to vanquish them all for the rest of the diamonds his warning falls into deaf ears Manga won't hear anything but his own hatred so it's time to put these words away and start working with fists the rivals reach a deadlock when the tribe surrounds them with their spears but Manga's throat is under John's knife and it turns out he's not alone after all a coup brings the mighty Mangani to fight for his long lost brother Manga doesn't have much a choice but to surrender at least George shows up with a speech that makes him feel better about it he says that if something can put their little brawl to shame in terms of irreparable damage that would be a European king with an army and then something to prove Jane is back on the boat now and the only thing that gives her hope is that faint Tarzan cry coming from the treetops and at the port of Boma the first thousand men have already arrived diamonds really are a king's best friend as Mr. Crumb approaches the port with the next batch of men John says it's time to get his friends George cracks a big smile because he knows what he means by now in a few moments all kinds of wild animals come storming through Bulma's polite society that's surely more excitement than most of these gentlemen expected rushing back to the ship Leon manages to keep the trunk in one hand and the woman in the other Mr. Crumb has a couple of guys row him there to collect the payment but then George gets hold of a machine gun and he is very eager to play with it he proceeds to transform Leon's ship into a sieve Tarzan gets there before it sinks and happens to stumble into the treasure Mr. Crumb watches him drag the precious trunk toward the water but sadly Leon is still here and he has the deadly rosary shouting out to Mr. Crumb he tells him to stop being a coward and come to collect his diamonds that's when Tarzan begins to make a weird sound Leon comes closer to hear what that could be and quickly regrets that decision Tarzan says it's a mating call and to Leon's horror he combines those words with a quick movement locking him between his legs he keeps him there long enough for the crocodiles to reach their dinner and then he breaks free from the murder rosary with sheer strength looking at the hundreds of Congolese people celebrating on the top of the hills Mr. Crumb says no way he will fight them all for free and gives the order to turn around the ship within the middle of that mess Jane has been standing still this whole time just waiting for her man to do his thing George is pleased to see them reunited but he's certainly much more pleased a few weeks later when he gets to expose Cambliopold and bring him to justice. Thanks for watching the video please like share and subscribe.